Well, hello everyone. Welcome to our engineer interview this week with Melissa Chigubu. My name's Scott and I work at Primary Engineer. Now, before we start, I want to say a thank you to everyone who's on this, who signed up to this year's competition. It's our 10th birthday this year, so thank you all for celebrating it with us. Now, we can't wait to see all of your amazing and creative ideas. Uh, you're going to get some additional inspiration today from our special guest speaker. Also, you can answer the question, if you were an engineer, what would you do? Now, as part of these interviews, we're going to be speaking to engineers who work on loads of different projects, all of them showing the wonderful, interesting and exciting things that happen when you work in engineering. Now, although these interviews are hosted live, you will be able to catch them on our YouTube channel at the end of each week. We publish each interview at midday on Fridays. Now, our special guest speaker is going to start with a 10 minute presentation all about her engineering journey and the exciting projects at GKN Automotive. And then we're going to open up to questions from the audience. But now I'm going to hand over to our wonderful special guest, Melissa Chigubu. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, I think I'll just get right into it. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Melissa Chigubu and I am currently a degree apprentice engineer working at GKN Automotive. And today I'm just going to do a quick presentation to you, um, just doing a quick run through of how I, on my journey to becoming an engineer. So I'll start off by doing a little browse of who am I? So these are a few things that I could think of when I was trying to see what I would think of before I was trying to describe myself to someone. So like I've already said, my name is Tanaka Melissa Chigubu. So I thought that would be a fun fact. I actually use my middle name. So a lot of people find it weird when I do say my name is actually Tanaka. Um, I'm also 22 years old of age and I'm already I'm originally from Zimbabwe, which is um, a little tiny country in the south of Africa. Um, I'm also a middle child. Um, I don't know if some of you might know about middle children syndrome, but I might have a few of those. Um, so I'm a middle child out of three. I've got an older sister and a younger brother. And I moved out of my parents' house at the age of 18 um, so I could start my uh, apprenticeship where I'm currently working right now. So I had to move away from home as I'm now working in Oxford, um, in Abingdon, just outskirts of Oxford. And as you already know, I'm an engineering apprentice and I'm studying at the University of Warwick and I work at JKN Automotive. So those are the few things I could think of um, to let you know of who I am today. Um, so I'm going to go in and give you, um, tell you what GKN Automotive does um, so that you can have an idea of um, the things I get to do a bit about my role if you have a simple understanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little short clip for you that will run you through some of the things we do in our department, some of the things we get involved in. So this is um, from our site. So GKN is a global company. We have different um, sectors. We have different um, sites, but I am based on a, in an innovation center. So we are a small team, about 60 people. Um, so these are some of the things that we do. So enjoy the video is a Perfect. leading global technology Lovely. company supplying 90 percent of the world's car companies i'm gordon day and this is the gkn automotive innovation center we have a multi-skilled team of 50 engineers they cover all of the engineering domains needed for advanced mechatronic development. They're highly skilled and flexible. That flexibility gives us a, a real advantage. We've got the latest tools. We do a lot of work at the design and analysis stage, but as well, we've got quite a facility for building prototypes and developing them on test benches. It's really the engine of the facility. We're developing and engineering the systems that we design. Bring it all together, and we then take it to a concept vehicle to get it out on the track and evaluate how our future aimed EDUs integrate with the vehicle. The ACE Drive project is a three year development of an electric drive unit for future EV. It's an integrated unit, so we call it three in one system. 
that is highly power dense and highly efficient. It has an 800 volt silicon carbide inverter with variable frequency control. It has a high speed motor with sophisticated algorithm control for efficiency. And at the center and the real core of the, the development is advanced cooling, both the electric motor and the inverter. The advanced cooling is a key to unlocking high efficiency in a small, light, integrated electric drive unit. We're pushing performance and the temperatures need to be managed in order to deliver the efficiency. EV technology is developing incredibly quickly. We're innovating at a rapid pace uh, and continuously. I call it modular innovation where we're looking as soon as possible and on short cycle times to bring knowledge transfer uh, to the wider organization. All of the targets for our ACE drive unit in terms of its performance will be validated at the bench and in the vehicle in this final stage of the program. That's obviously a very exciting phase for our team of engineers here. For GKN, which has 260 years of experience in innovating and meeting the next market challenge, Really, this is just our latest stage to meet the future that represents the electric revolution. Great. Um, so, yeah, that was um, just an overview of what it is that we do at GKN Automotive. Uh, we have different sectors. Um, I will give you a quick fun fact before I explain this. I never saw myself actually getting into the automotive industry or even electrical. Um, I always thought it would be boring or it would be so repetitive. So I just never looked that direction. But come to my surprise, here I am telling you about an automotive company, an electrical company, which I absolutely love. Um, so as you've seen in the video, there are different sectors. There are different parts that um, combine everything. So what we do essentially is we come up with innovative ideas. For example, like you've seen in one of the projects um, that our site manager, as you saw in the speaking, was mentioning, we did a three-in-one project where we were trying to make the smallest um, system we could, but obviously when you try to make something smaller, it heats up quicker. So we had to come up with an advanced cooling system where instead of just cooling the electric motor and the inverter with water, we also used a spray, a spray cooling system of oil. So we would spray oil directly onto the windings so that it would cool up easier. So if you can cool something, that means you can also push it to work even harder. So it will be faster, it will be more efficient, but it will be easily cooled. So that was the project you got to see in there. But working at GKN Automotive, especially as an apprentice, it's allowed me to go into different departments and see what it's about, learn from different people and explore. So the best thing about being an apprentice is that I've had the opportunity to move from one department to the next and actually explore my options. I remember last year or two years ago, someone was asking me, so what is it that you want to do when you finish? And I was like, I still don't know. <laughs> I am still exploring, but I'm now getting to that stage where I know what I want to specialize in, the things I enjoy because of the amount of time I've been given to just explore and see the different things. So that is what GKN Automotive is about. So what do I do specifically here at GKN? Um, so my first apprenticeship that I did was an advanced apprenticeship, which is a level three apprenticeship. So it's equivalent to sixth form. Um, so when I was finishing that first apprenticeship, which I started in Coventry um, at the AMTC, um, I did a placement year, which I then came to GK and Automotive. So that's how I managed to step my foot into automotive. Um, it was through my placement. So as you can see in the picture shown on the screen here, as a technician, you get to do the hands-on work. So you are the person that receives the job information or the job instruction to say, I need this done or can you do this? So I was here working on the one of our rigs um, where we test our motors um, and do all the amazing work. So this is just basically mimicking real life conditions of a car. So if you have your motor in a car, 
we can basically put it on a rig instead of putting it in a car to run the tests. So here I was training to be a technician. And then as you can see in my next photo here, I'm now a degree apprentice. So I'm now training to be an engineer. So I'm now training to be the person that was giving me the instructions of what jobs to do. Um, so that's the difference between training to be a technician and to be a, an engineer. Um, and some of the things we do at GK and Automotive is we work with Formula student teams, Formula E teams. So in this picture, you can see here, um, it was at the Formula student event this year in June or July time. So this was one of the teams. They had just taken their car out on the track and then it died halfway through. So they took it back to the garage and they were working on it. And as you can see, I'm trying to speak to the guy, but he's not interested because he just wants to get his car back on track. <laughs> Um, and we also work with Formula E teams. Um, and as you can see here, this is one of the Formula E drivers um, for Jaguar. And we also have the graduates from our site in London. So this was just a day where we were getting to know the new graduates and welcoming them to GKN. Um, one of the other things I get involved in being an apprentice is STEM um, and STEM events. So I'm part of the Oxfordshire Ambassadorship Group and that's what you can see there. And another thing I also do is I'm a, I'm a WES board member. So I speak on behalf of apprentices. So I'm one of the 12 apprentices in the, in the UK where we represent women in engineering and we speak on behalf of apprentices. So this is one of the projects that we've been working on, which is a podcast that we've been doing. Um, so that's what you can see on there. So these are some of the things I get to do being an apprentice and I found it so fulfilling being able to explore and see different sides and aspects to me and I enjoy it every single day. Um, so just a quick overview of some of the projects I have worked on or done. So this was one of the very first things I did when I started working here, which was CAD. So this is computer aided design. I had to make parts for a stress and tension machine. So as you can see on there, they've got the part numbers. I had to make those and then just being able to design something on a computer screen and then send it out to get manufactured and then seeing it actually come back and have the tangible part that you can actually see. I found that really satisfying, especially it having been a challenging project for me. I really enjoyed that. And then this is my favorite project that I've been working on. So I remember when I started, I didn't actually, there was a lot to learn. So what they decided to do was they came up with a project for me where they say, we, we want to learn how to use this new software that we have for our rigs, which I showed you before. Um, and this was called Motec software and no, not a lot of people in our company knew it. As you know, we have 50 engineers. Um, so they gave me a project to say, create a small rig that we can use to test this software and run this software that if we break it, it's okay compared to us breaking our very expensive actual rigs. So I was thinking, I was like, okay, cool, this is great. So what I loved so much about this project was um, the different parts to it, the building, as you can see in this image, it was just starting out. They're having to think, OK, cool, if I make it this way, it might not work. Some of the things you can see on this picture, I also changed and tweaked and you learn that some things work, some things don't. So what I did was we came up with the Die Hard project example. I don't know if some of you have watched that movie, but there was a scene where they had to defuse a bomb, but they had to make a specific measurement, but they didn't have the containers that could measure that accurate measurement. So that's the same system that I had to create here. I had to make four liters, but using a five liter tank and a three liter tank. So it's like putting it one into the other until you make the four liters. I won't run you through the system because I might confuse the life out of you. <laughs> um, but this rig was actually um, so that you could learn how to write a program of making that four liter tank, four liters in using five liters and three liters. So I had to buy the tanks. So this was the first time I was actually able to purchase stuff. So I found that interesting that, oh wait, when you're working, you can purchase things and they can come in and you can put them together. So I was learning so much and it was opening myself to so many different things. I had to make the electrical box, as you can see on the back here, this is an electrical box. So I did all the wiring. 
um, all the electrical components and all the electrical stuff for it. I did the assembly for it. I did the systems, the software. So it just combined all the skills that I was to expose myself to here at JKN. So this was one of my favorite projects that I thought I would share with you all. So yeah, as you can see, some of the parts I was purchasing and then the software aspects that was um, included in it. So this is some of the software that we do use on our rigs. So I got, I got exposed to that as well. And that's the wiring cabinet I was talking about, where you can see some of the wiring I've done. If you see it now, it's a bit much more fuller than it looks in there. But yes, that is it. Um, that's all I can tell you right now about what I've been doing at GKN and what we do. Do you have any questions for me? Well, Melissa, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I'm sure we You're will welcome. have some questions. But to start with, Melissa, I have a question for you. Uh, oh, what yes. do you love <laughs> about your job? Um, so yeah, so as I've already mentioned, what I do love about my job is the variety of things. There is the different stuff, uh, how I'm not always doing the exact same thing every single day. As I've already mentioned, I didn't want to go into automotive because I thought it would be very repetitive doing the exact same thing. If it means I'm putting a door on a car, I'm just constantly <laughs> putting a door. But it is completely different here at um, because this is an innovation center. We come up with new ideas, different things, and every single day is always different. That must be very exciting. Um, very yeah, exciting. So you said you'd, you'd got to work in loads of different departments. You must have worked with some really interesting people. Yes, I always say this to um, the people I work with to say we are all so weird and different in our <laughs> own ways, but it works. Um, one thing about engineers is we think differently. So you find that there are different characters, different personalities, but when we all come together, we just make magic. So yeah, I have met some interesting people. Fantastic. Um, we do have a question here um, and it's a quick question. Uh, what inspired you to be an engineer? Because it sounds like you started doing it from quite a young age. That is a really good question. Yes. Um, so I originally came from Zimbabwe, as I've mentioned, and obviously moving to the United Kingdom, I moved in just starting off high school. So I took me a couple of years to actually understand how the system worked. So in the process of doing that, I didn't know that when you finish your GCSEs, there is a life ahead, like you actually <laughs> have to make decisions. So I remember being in high school, enjoying certain subjects like maths, um, design and technology. So the practical stuff, I knew what I enjoyed, but I actually didn't know that I had to make certain decisions and choices after. So when I was finishing off my GCSEs, I remember people saying, so what are you doing after? And I was like, I don't know. So I went and sat down with our careers advisor and then she started telling me the options and what was there or what we could do after. And then I just had to sit down and do research for myself to be like, OK, cool. These are the subjects I enjoy. These are the things I enjoy. So the fact that I loved problem solving, I always say during my math lessons, there is always an answer. I know there is always an answer. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite subjects. And I also just I was I've just been hands on from a very young age, I'd say. Brilliant. And um, you mentioned there about problem solving. We've heard from other engineers that it's a very important part of what they do. It's about fixing problems. Is that the same where you work? That is the most accurate thing ever. Yes, because <laughs> um, you find that it's the small things. It's not even to say on a big project you're working on, but it could be something so simple on a normal day. It could be someone's computer not working. You find engineers just get excited by the little things. Um, if there is an issue, automatically our natural instinct are, I need to solve this. There is a certain satisfaction that you get once you've managed to work out what the problem was and you fix and you're like, oh, I did that. So yeah, there is always problems that are occurring and you need to be able to have that mindset to say, how do I solve this? How do I break down the process? And what is the outcome that I'm gonna get from this? So yes, problem solving is a huge thing as an engineer. And like you said, it's not you on your own. You've got a really cool team of really cool, uh, clever and interesting people. Um, yeah. So I'm sure there's people out there with questions. Remember, click the Q&A button and you can type your question in there in the public feed. But this is a question that we got sent in and it's, was your job hard when you started and is it easier now? So I would <laughs> say every time you start something, it's always hard because you have to get your head around it. Um, but 
because I have moved around quite a lot, especially from a young age, I've just been trying diff moving different schools, moving countries. I've always had to adapt. So now I would say things are way easier. Even when I'm starting, even when I started this job, it, I wouldn't say it was hard. I just knew that I had to learn certain things and I just knew I wouldn't get it immediately, but I would eventually get my head around it. But I would also say that one thing that does help is having the passion for something yeah. because I enjoy engineering and I love it. I, I was happy to be here and I was happy to learn. So when you want to learn something and you have the passion for it, I would say you will never find it hard. So my job is not actually difficult where I wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go there today. It's like I'm actually excited because I'm like, oh, what do they have for me today? What is it that I'm going to? experience or learn so i would say it's not hard you just need to have the passion for it brilliant um yeah i think that when you're passionate about something it is it's, it's, sometimes it can be stressful but if you enjoy it um that's what we love to hear um so I, I, I think you said you were three years into working at gkn and you've shown us your favorite project so far is there something you really want to work on the in the video we heard about a test car for testing things out that's what i'd want to work on <laughs> Uh, yes, so GKN, our innovation center, we actually have a site in Myra where we have like a small team of like three people where they have their office there, but they have a track. So when we work on our projects and we put it in the car, we take it over to Myra and it goes on the track. So one of my favorite moments working here was having a day out there where I just went on every wow. single track. I was just being driven on all the tracks. There was one that had like spray where you have to test your tires or the movement of your car. And we were doing all sorts of skidding on those tracks. And yeah, so you do have some great moments and experiences with this job. So I have been to that um, tracking site, yes. Brilliant. Um, so we do have another question to come in, and I think it was it was to do with something we heard in the video, and I actually wrote it down as well. We heard something about advanced mechatonic development. I was wondering if, if you could tell at least me what, what that means. Does that mean about making new things and stuff that doesn't exist and creating it for the first time? Or um, I'm not sure if it was the mechatronics, um, but the project that they were talking about was the A Strife project. So it's quite an advanced cooling system. So that's the system I mentioned about how on a normal mortar, you just have a cooling jacket that is cooled using fluid like water that just goes around the jacket and it cools it down. But that on its own is not enough or efficiency to actually, if you want to exceed a certain level or if you want to push it harder. So the advanced cooling system side of it was that spray cooling directly onto the windings. So they made it advanced by adding a different layer. So now with both systems, we've managed to create a three-in-one system, make it as small and compact as pos possible and also make it as fast as possible. So yeah. Wow, it just, it just sounds quite interesting, doesn't it? Um, we've got another question here from Jake. Um, how did you get the job at GKN Automotive? <laughs> Good question, Jake. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, so when I was studying my apprenticeship, I did an advanced apprenticeship at the AMTC in Coventry. So I applied for that one whilst I was in sixth form. So I actually started applying for it whilst I was doing my GCSEs and I was finishing off. And that's when I'd learned that, you know, there are next steps afterwards. <laughs> so I was like, I want to do an apprenticeship in engineering because I'm practical. Um, so it was after my GCSEs when I was applying for apprenticeships, I didn't, I got rejected so many times. I won't even tell you how many, <laughs> but I remember getting on the train to Birmingham, getting on the bus to Coventry, just looking at different places and being invited to so many interviews. But obviously, um, because I was fairly young and being an apprentice, there were certain things they were looking for and I just didn't hit those criteria. But I was very adamant to get it and I was very determined. I just knew eventually it would work. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me straight after my GCSEs. So I decided to go to sixth form and do um, engineering um, as a BTEC. But before I finished my whole two years of sixth form, with after the first year, I managed to get a, an apprenticeship with MTC in Coventry. So after that apprenticeship the system the the structure of the apprenticeship was three years long two years you would do it um training at the amtc and mm -hmm. then in the final year you would then go out for placement 
So they would bring out opportunities to you to say, this company is looking for this certain person, this company is looking for this. So GKN was actually brought to my attention. But as I said, uh-huh. initially I was very hesitant because <laughs> I was like, it's automotive um, and it's electrical. And I was like, okay, but I'll try it out. So that's how I found out about GKN. And then I came here for an interview and they wanted to take me on. Yeah. And the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> We're now here. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so we've got another question here uh, and you sort of talked about a little bit, but what were you like in school? In school, that's a really interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> um, I was very much, I didn't care. So I just wanted to do what made me happy. So I guess you could call me one of those weird kids because I know in school, <laughs> everyone, you're trying to impress someone, you're trying to do something to impress others. But I think I was just that free spirit kid that I just wanted to do what made me happy. And yeah, so I heard certain subjects I enjoyed. So if I knew and understood something, I was always the kid raising the hand and I was always the kid pushing herself, going out for um, assemblies, pushing myself to do things that I wasn't comfortable doing, I would say. And people would think I was cocky or that I would, I was very much, you know how people look at you to say, oh, why do you think you always know everything? But I just... (laughs) decided from a young age to push myself to do things that made me uncomfortable and I think that's that was the engineering me that I didn't see because we always just want to try something and see if it works yeah exactly you were problem solving you were testing um just when you said that so you're always trying things to see if they work what happens when they don't work does does it all crumble down or do you learn from that is it better do you learn things how does that work <laughs> so one of the things I have seen being an engineer or just watching the people around me is you always have a breakdown moment when you're trying to solve something. Um, so you, it's either you're trying to break down a code, trying to sort out a code and it's just not working. You will have a breakdown moment. But one thing I can say I've seen, no one gives up. There is always a solution and we always get to the solution. So I can't say, I can't tell you what happens when we don't solve it, but it's just that there is a process. It's either the process is really difficult or you just get there straight away, but we always push through. <laughs> and again, it's the team around you, like you say. Um, so I think we've got time for one more quick question uh, and we've got one in here and it's, uh, if you could describe engineering in three words, what words would they be? Oh, okay. Um, I like that one a lot. Um, I would say creative, um, challenging, and stretching or growth. Ah, is, brilliant. There's a lot of growth in it, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when you get to do so many different things like you've managed to do as well at GKN. Um, well, just looking at the time now, I would just like to say a massive thank you to Melissa for joining us and answering all of our questions and also helping inspire the engineers in the making who are out there in the audience. Uh, now, everyone watching this, it's your turn to come up with your own engineering ideas. Remember and send them to us once you're finished so we can get our certificates sent out to you and we'll hopefully see you at our in-person public exhibitions in May. But for now, I want to thank you all. And remember, if you were an engineer, what would you do?